Please hang up and try again. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the session of user interaction. Today, we're going to talk about scanner, uh, also to the command line arguments and J option pane. The whole idea of using these three different items is to give you this sense of user interaction. I know user interaction might mean a little, a lot of things, but right now we are in the process to trying to retrieve information from the computer user and use that information to write good programs. Also, I'm gonna talk about the usage of wrappers. Wrappers, they basically, they're objects that basically help you to transform strings into a data type. So let's go ahead and start this session about user interaction. First of all, let's start to ask why we need this user interaction or user interface as many um, computer science they call it. So the whole idea here is to interact with the computer user through a program. So now we are in the stage of not only compiling program that helps you to write simple operations, or like math operations or basic concatenation using the string, but also we would like to make meaningful assignments or meaningful programs where you can allow the computer user to give you that information, use that information, whether it's a primitive type or a string or an object, and just put them in a context. Maybe you want to perform some operations like mathematical operations or whatnot. So the whole idea here is to make a more dynamic program based on the user's input. And there is different layers or different types of user interfacing like command line, that's where you provide in the terminal when you have a terminal or a command line. Uh, the nice thing about Visual Studio is that the code, it provides a terminal where you can actually interact through command line interfacing. If you don't have a uh, Visual Studio, you can use your regular terminal that is in your machine or your shell or basically your command line. So that is what they call user interfaces. Some of the other applications are manual driving interface. Like for example, when you go to a bank or when you location, you have a platform and you just click or tap on those menu driving interfaces that allows you to get information from the user. Then you have the graphical user interface, they're usually called GUI, and that allows you to have buttons and Dropbox and whatnot, but allows you to have an interface more, what they call user-friendly, right? Again, user-friendly is a little bit technical, but uh, user interfaces, might, the best way you can interact with granny, right? Is to give you a graphical user interface so she can just click on some in, um, interactions and go and get what she wants from uh, from that mobile device. And then you have the touchscreen uh, graphical user interfaces. This is referring to the ones that I was talking about the menu driving. When you have a mobile device, like your mobile device, your cell phone, you have that interaction. That's how you type your messages when you use applications like Snapchat or uh, Instagram or, or Facebook, or maybe when you go to and give a payment, that's those are touchscreen graphical user interface. So we're gonna focus in this class more about how to read arguments and that, that relates more like a user interface to command lines or using your terminal command lines. And we're gonna use scanner. Scanner is a more complicated object, but very useful that allows you to uh, interact with the computer user through dialogues. This is more like a menu driving interface. And I'm gonna talk about J option pane. It's a kind of GUI that Java supports. Many Java interfaces and, and Java JDKs, they don't support this anymore. So that's a little bit complicated to uh, introduce that now. I know it's in your book and other resources, but it, don't worry, I'm not going to question you about J option pain. I just want to discuss a little bit about how the flexibility of Java interaction is nowadays. So let's go ahead and talk about scanner. So scanner is a Java object which basically give you this ability to write simple text scanner that basically parses the text into primitive types or into tokens. So this is a very useful object that you probably gonna use it for the rest of your life. And let me just elaborate a little bit about what they mean with tokens. Tokens are the smallest elements of a program which are identified by its compiler like identifier, keyboards, literals, operators, 
separators, and there is a lot of different perspective about token. So every time you deal with, for example, a string, you remember that a string is a set of characters. Every time you see a, a blank space, every letter or every word that is separated by a blank space is considered to be a token. That's what they mean. I'm going to give you a couple of those examples. In reality, we use scanner for primarily in word C as one for three main reasons. To read user's input, to read files, and to scan a string. We're going to use a lot of uh, reading the user's input in the next weeks uh, through a lot of exercises and how to scan strings as well. So we will be discussing this in the session. Let me just talk about a little bit about the basic methods that Scanner provides you. Scanner counts with many different methods. As a matter of fact, if you go to the Java API, you will find um, a big list of those um, methods that is being provided for you. But the most popular and the ones that we're going to use is the ones that you're watching right now in your screen. So next, we'll provide you the next complete string in the scanning. Next line will give you, will advance to the next line and will give you the string from that line, the entire string. Next int will retrieve the next integer. Next double, it will read and retrieve the next double. And has next, it will give you true if there's something else to read from that scanner. Most likely has next, we're gonna read it or we're gonna use it when we read the chapter on loops because that's the way we're gonna read files. And this is very useful. So let's go ahead, give a very simple scanner demo about how to interact with the computer user by using scanner. As you can see, I just opened um, Visual Studio Code and I'm going to create a very simple program called User Interactions 01. Let's go ahead and write the very simple skeleton to write this program. Okay, now I want you to pay attention. Now, this is what we have discussed for the past weeks. And hopefully by now, all of you are very familiar how to write a very simple class. This is gonna be very useful. I just saved this program called User Interaction Example 01 in my desktop. And here is when we're gonna learn three new things. The very first thing is by going to the very first line of the code and hit enter. Here's where we're gonna need a helper. We're gonna need a friend called Scanner. For that, we need to import java.util.scanner. Please pay attention here. Scanner, it's on capital S, which means it's an object. Import basically as Java to say, hey, I need a helper. Please call my friend who is in this library, Java, and lives in the util, and its name is Scanner. Basically, that's what it's saying. I need a helper. I need a friend, right? I need to start reading or I'm going to communicate with the computer user and I need this friend. So this line, ladies and gentlemen, it's very important because it has to be the very first line in your program. If you don't have this line here, Java will not recognize your program and it will say, what are you talking about? Who's scanner, right? So this is very important that you incorporate that line in the very first line of your program. The second thing is that you need to create an instance of your object scanner. So if you need to help, if you need a helper, it's going to be called scanner. Then you need that. I call it input, but you can call it whatever you want. I have seen books that they call it keyboard. Some people call it SCR, like a shortcut for scanner. I call it input because that will be the responsible to read the information from the computer user. The third thing is that you need to put the equals new and then scanner and put here system that in. So this is quite important, ladies and gentlemen, because basically this part that I'm highlighting right now, system that in will indicate that you're going to read from the computer user information. Right now, I hate to tell you this, but you have to memorize this line, the scanner, the name, the equal signs, the new, and then the scanner again. Notice that this thing repeats again after that. We're going to write a program that emulates when you go into a party. I know, uh, I'm not so sure how many of you have gone to a party, hopefully not too many of you during these difficult times, but 
when you go to a party, uh, usually you want to meet people there and interact, right? So it has some, doesn't have to be a party, probably a gathering, right? So suppose that you arrive to the party and you want to, you just approach to humans, yeah? I know it's weird, right? We pick computer science because we like computers, most of it, right? So the very first thing is that we're going to interact with a computer, with a human to say, I don't know, something, I don't know, what, what do you have to say to this, to the people? Hi, hi, what is your name? And then that's the way you're going to ask to the, to the human. And when we retrieve that information, when we ask that information, obviously we want to have a string, right? So whoever name is, you just need a, a string for that. So we need to anticipate a string. I'm going to call it name. And it's going to come from the fact of this thing. And I, I need your indivisible attention here because input contains is your scanner and we can extract its name. Now, I want you to pay attention what Visual Studio Code is recommending me. It's recommending me two things, right? Well, many things, by the way. But here is telling me, hey, you can use next line. It will give you a string. You're anticipating a string. You should use next line. Tell you, hey, you should use that next. It will give you back a string also. We're going to use next line because we want to make sure we capture everything from, from there. So that is that. What is the next thing that we're going to do? So let's actually, you know what? Let's save this and let's compile this and run it. Let's see what this is the output. Compile and then run. So here we're getting, hi, what is your name? And I'm not so sure if you can realize, but we are waiting to get a response there. It's kind of hard to tell um, because here is, it looks like a big square there. And that is basically what is showing. It shows like a small rectangle, but it's waiting for our name here. So I'm going to put here Servin and that's it. So usually that's what happened, right? You go to a party and ask, hey, what's your name? And then you disappear. Well, no, we need a little bit more courage there. Let's just let's try to stay there, right? Let's get some courage man and say like, okay, fine. I'm, I'm, I'm devoted to here and try to see if I can make a friend, right? So we should say, nice to meet you, right? Uh, that's a polite way to acknowledge that someone is responding to you. So let's let's make a comment and let's do, let's do the actual um, concatenation part here where you can say, Hey, something like nice to meet you. And then we're going to concatenate the name that we got from the computer user. Remember how we concatenate? We use the plus sign and then we use name. We can also show some interest. Probably that's an important idea. So maybe we can say exclamation mark saying, I'm really excited to meet you, right? Maybe two more just to make sure that works. Let's give it a try about how this works. Let me just clear my screen, compile and run this program. Hi, what's your name? Okay, I'm Chris. Nice to meet you, Chris. And look how excited I am, right? To just express that I'm I'm really want to uh, engage a conversation with this human. What will be the next question? That's a typical question that you ask in a party, right? Hey, what's your name? What do you like to eat, right? So the next question maybe can be something like, what is your favorite food? Traditional question when you go to a party or a gathering, like the very first question. Sometimes probably the very first question, hey, what do you like to eat, right? And then after that, you can ask a question because this can be critical. You don't want to hang out with people who, let me put it this way, you want to hang out with people who liked what you eat. We're going to do something similar what we did on line six. Once we ask what's your favorite food, we can ask, we, re, we want to have a string. So here we're going to create a variable called food coming from the fact that we're going to use input.next line. So we're going to retrieve that information. And we want to be positive with this conversation. And I don't know, say like, OMG, I love, and then you can put here whatever they give you as a food. And maybe just, sure, maybe you can show some enthusiasm after that. Okay, maybe a little bit too much. So you can see like, hey, I like that decision. So let me just compile this program and run this again. So, hi, what is your name? My name is Chris. Nice to meet you, Chris. What is your favorite food? Tacos, of course. 
OMG, I love tacos. Something like that. Something that shows interest, something that shows enthusiasm. And you probably are, are going to be buddies if you like tacos. So let's ask another question. Let's ask something more interesting. Interesting the fact that we're going to combine a different data type. We've been dealing with strings right now as name, as food, but probably we want to have something more interest. So let's ask a question about that requires an integers to deal with an integers. Some of you are thinking like, how much you weight that? I don't think that's like the great question to ask if you just want to meet the person right now. Or, well, I guess it depends on the gathering that you're doing right now, but let's uh, let's just keep it simple, especially not after the question about what you like to eat, right? So let's ask something about that, ask a different data type, like an integer, like your age. What is your age? So how old are you? So that's usually what you ask, something like, how old are you? And then we can ask that information. So I want you to pay attention in the following line. Now we're not expecting strings like what we did on line six or line nine. Now we're expecting an integer like int, and then we can put here the value of h. So here the h will come from the fact that we're going to use input again, but check this out. When I put input dot next, here Java recommend me another method called next int. Next int will give us an integer value coming from the computer user. And this is very important because we are anticipating an integer. Notice that the I is capital, is, is dot next and then I capital. So we want to impress this person once we got the age. Let's calculate the year this individual was born, shall we? How do we calculate the year someone got born? For example, uh, we need to know a year, right? And that will come from the fact, for example, suppose this year is what? I lost track of years. We calculate the year by the current year minus the age that they provide. That way, we're going to calculate when this individual was born. Very quick. And we can say something like this. We can, I don't know. If you want to impress this person because of your cool math tricks, you can say something like, I bet you were born in, and then you plug in here the year. And then I don't know, maybe just put some question like, no, actually something like, I would bet you were born in this year, eh? Does that sounds like a, something you might set to someone? I don't know, I need to go to more gatherings. Let me just clear my screen, compile, and run this program again. Hi, what's your name? I'm Chris. Nice to meet you, Chris. What is your favorite food? Tacos, of course. OMG, I love tacos. How old are you? I'm 31. I bet you were born in 1998. OMG, right? This person knows. I guess I put uh, an extra space here. They know where I was, this year was born, right? So this is very impressive. So you can actually do these things by interacting with the computer user and requesting information from different types. You just need to be careful because I asked you for strings at the very beginning, and then I asked you for an int later on. You need to be careful with scanner because scanner is kind of funky because if I try to ask later on, like, what is your major, for example, something like this, I want you to pay extra attention. Like, what is your major? Yeah, or what do you study? Some of, some of, some of you may ask, is that what, what is your study field? Actually, you know what, after what is your major, we're, we're trying to find after that, the data type, we're going to go back to a string. So we're going to come here, major. And then we're going to do very similar what we did on line six and what we did on line nine. So we're going to set input dot next line like that. And then we're going to say, uh, oh, wow, that is very interesting. Tell me more about it. Maybe happy face. So check this out. Check this glitch that happens with, with scanner. Hi, what's your name? I'm Chris. Nice to meet you, Chris. What is your favorite food? Tacos, of course. OMG, I love tacos. How old are you? I'm 31. I bet you were born in 1990, eh? Now. The next question is, what is your major 
And you're supposed to have that indicator that you're waiting for my information. But instead, it's like, oh, wow, that is very interesting. Tell me more about it, happy face. Obviously, there's something weird there. Didn't catch my, my major. Was it? I don't think so. There was something you didn't capture what the user wanted to have. And that is because Scanner has this funky way that after you read an integer, ladies and gentlemen, and you change gears to read the string, Java, it will try to expect to have a next another integer. So you need to flush, you need to clean your actual scanner. So how are we going to do that? So after you read the integer from line 11, you need to flush, you need to clear your actual scanner. So how do you do this? It's very easy. You just need to do input that next line like that. So here we're flushing. I know it's like an interesting word. I didn't come up with that one, the scanner, or we're gonna clear up, clear up in order to start reading again accordingly in major. As a matter of fact, oh, wow, maybe we should put something like that, the major here, right? We're gonna concatenate the major. Sounds very interesting. I think that's more, more understandable in a conversation. Let's, let's try to read this. Let me just save my program, clear my screen, compile, and then run. Hi, what is your name? I'm Chris. Hi, nice to meet you, Chris. What is your favorite food? Tacos. OMG, I love tacos. How old are you? I'm 31. I bet you were born in 1990, eh? What is your major? So now we can see this screen that we're requesting. They're waiting for us. They didn't conclude. They didn't finish up the program. They're waiting for us. So I'm going to put here computer science, the best major ever. They just hit there. Oh, wow. Computer science sounds very interesting. Tell me more about it, happy face. So now we were able to capture everything inside of Scanner. So a couple of items that you need to recognize. Scanner has this ability to retrieve multiple data types like for example we're doing here next line next in you can also put next double if you just want to make how how what is your weight or how tall are you i don't know some other question then you're going to extract information with different data types you can use them they're very useful once you have that information you can actually perform operations here we did a very simple operation to calculate the year based on the age that we're given to you now you need to be careful because when you change gears, when you change data types, for example, where we're discussing about strings and then we're expecting an integer and then we went back to a string for the major. So that change actually will have to provoke us to clear up the, the actual buffering. It's called buffering and some people they call flushing. And that's basically when you store an information, you need to clean it up before coming back. I know what's your question. Professor, we were asking strings, and that didn't happen when we went to uh, to an integer. I know, because we were using next line. If we were using something else, like for example, next, we'll give you the next token, and this is where I was referring to token. And we'll, it will basically give you this interaction of a string, and you need an integer. So you need to be careful with this type of things. It's not difficult. The only thing you have to pay attention is that if you're using strings, make sure you flush it, you make sure you clean it up, before you go and read the actual integer or vice versa. Can we flush it somewhere else? Absolutely, just flush it somewhere before you start reading another data type. For example, I put it there just because as soon as we get the integer, we flush it up. But for example, we can say, I bet you were born in this thing. What is your major? Since you know that you're gonna go back to strings, maybe you can flush it up here. Hopefully that makes sense because the flush is only to clear up your buffer. It's really up to you where you're going to implement it there. So hopefully this is useful. So the next thing that I want to talk about is the command line argument. So this is a different way that we can extract information from the computer user. So the command line comes from this item called string square bracket args. You probably remember that because that shows up in every program you write in Java. Now there's a couple of things that you need to understand. That square brackets that you see here, those square brackets basically tell you that there's an array. Now, we will talk about array later on, but they basically tells you that whatever you put in arcs will be stored in an array of strings. 
So a string is a data type. It can be whatever you want to put there and it's gonna store in like in a box. So you're probably familiar with something similar when we deal with char at. But char at basically helps you to extract information, characters from a string, very similar to the string. But here, suppose that you enter one and two, that will be, the number one will be stored at position zero and the number two will be stored at position one. For that, you will need those data type wrappers. So let me just talk about the wrappers real quick. I don't know if you can see this table will reflect those eight primitive types in the left-hand side. And in the right-hand side, you see the wrapper. The wrapper is basically an object that it will help you to transform a string into a data type. For example, if you want an int, you need to use integer capital I. Also with double, double capital D, char character, those are called wrappers, and basically they require to have a string that you're gonna translate it into a data type. So let's go ahead and make the demo. I'm gonna call user interactions example 02, and this is very similar. We're gonna use the same example from the user interactions 01 that we did it, but this time we're gonna pass those values as an argument, shall we? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy and paste this. I'm very lazy. So I'm going to copy and then I'm going to paste this part here. I'm going to call it user interaction 02 and I will do different things because right now we don't want to read from scanner. We're going to read from the arguments and we're going to build something more interesting. Let me just demonstrate something very quick here. Instead of just having the scanner, I'm going to read from the arguments that we're passing through the command line. So we're gonna just list here at the very beginning before we go into these details, I'm gonna comment out the rest of this program. And I'm not sure if you can see everything changed, all the colors changed here. I'm just gonna close this part at the very end and I'm going to close the main and I'm going to close the class. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to demonstrate how the arguments work by using here arcs at position zero. I'm going to concatenate the very first argument. Your name is like that. Let me save this program because we haven't saved this program. Let me just save, compile. And when I run, ladies and gentlemen, when I run this program, I want you to pay attention on the command line. After user interaction example 02, I'm gonna give a space. It's a blank space, right? And I'm gonna put here my name, Chris. I want you to pay attention what's going to happen after I hit enter. Your name is Chris. So that is because I put as an argument zero the string Chris. I can change this. I can put here Servin and it will reflect automatically. So what is happening? On line three, you're reading args at position zero. That will be the very first element that you're providing. So now your question is, Professor, what happens if you don't provide any? If you don't provide any, there will be a problem. And it will basically give you the following issue. Array index out of bounds exception. Index zero is out of the bounds of the length zero. That means that you never provide anything and you're trying to get information from something that is not there. This is a very important aspect because you might need to actually take a look at this part more in detail. It's because you never provide those arguments. So you need to be careful. And now having know this stuff, now we can actually write the program or something what we call midlips, right? Maybe you have seen midlips before. Is when you extract information from the user and just put it in a story. Let's try to do that story uh, right now. So your name is that, and then and then we can put concatenation here, and you like, and then I'm gonna put here, arts at position one, the foot. You are, and then we put here, arts at position two, years old, and currently you are studying, and then you put here, arcs three a couple of things here okay the very first thing so i'm gonna assume that you will provide those arguments and let's actually compile this problem and we will have this values for example let me just compile the program real quick and then let's try to run this program right now the first argument will be the name i'm chris the second thing will be 
tacos. Here I'm asking the age, 31, and finally I'm gonna put here CS for a reason. Pay attention what's going to happen. Your name is Chris and you like tacos. You are 31 years old and currently you're studying CS. Looks good, yeah, looks fine. So a couple of items here that we want to elaborate. The very first thing is that what happens if I put here computer science? So computer science, the token three will be computer, but we're never gonna catch the science part. And the reason is because computer science is two tokens. The first token is computer, the second token is science. So Java will actually consider each of those as a token. This is good, but this is not very good if you want to actually consider computer science. If you want to provide computer science, you might have to specify that this is a token by putting those quotes. You see, your name is Chris and you like tacos. You're 31 years old and currently you are studying computer science. Now you can capture the both strings as one token. Kind of important, a little bit hard to know, but it's important to recognize this need of the quote in quotes just to force Java that you are doing what you want. Now, second thing, what happens to the year that they were born? How can we make that calculation? Remember that last time in our previous example, we calculate the year of this user by doing this. We can do similar things but it will be a little bit of more work. For example, if I put here the year, the argument containing how old the user was born is arguments two. So you can say, oh, I know. I'm just gonna put here args at position two and that'll do the trick. Notice that Java already recognized that there is a problem here. And he says the operator minus is undefined for the argument type. So you cannot subtract an integer from the actual string. You need to be very careful with this thing because Java is not going to make an arithmetic operation between a string and an integer. You can't do this. So please be careful on this item. So how can we fix this, Professor? We can, and this is by using the wrapper or the helper. This arcs at position two, we know is a string because it says there. So what we need to do is that we need to transform it into a whole number, into an integer. That's why we need to use this helper integer dot parse int, open the parentheses and then put those values inside. Notice that right now the problem was gone, right? This highlighting is only to tell you that you haven't used it yet, but you will be used it. Very important aspect. This is called parsing. And when you parse them, basically you transform what is inside of those parentheses, which is a string, into a whole number by using parse int. Very useful, very important. Now we can actually incorporate a phrase like something like, I bet you were born. We can put the a thing somewhere here. You are this, years old, and then we can say something like this. I bet you were born in year A, eh? and then after that, and currently you're studying computers, whatever, right? Okay, so, so we're gonna perform this operation. Let me just clear my screen real quick, compile, and run. Your name is Chris, and you like tacos. You're 31 years old. I bet you were born in 1990, eh? And currently you are studying computer science. How about that? Very nice, very understandable just by passing those arguments. So notice that we passed one, two, three, four arguments, and we were able to create a nice story based on that information, including the year. Last thing that I want you to pay attention, I don't know, can you see this scroll left and right? This is a little bit too long, ladies and gentlemen, and I don't like that. And as a matter of fact, not many people will like you to write this long. Uh, you put in a notepad, this will cover probably two or, or three lines like that. I'm going to show you how to manipulate this whole string because this is a whole string. I don't know if you noticed. We're using a lot of concatenation. I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to use the following thing. I'm going to put here MSG for message. So what is MSG, you might think? So I'm going to create here a string, MSG, which is a variable. Remember, a variable is a placeholder, which is value, eventually change. I'm going to dump 
this whole thing that I have here. Don't forget the semicolon at the end. Still long, professor. I know it's long, but now you have the ability to cut into small pieces. Be careful how you cut your string. I always recommend to, when you have this invisible line here, right? Here is a good point to cut it, by the way. After the plus, you can just hit enter and this will basically put it in a different line. Here, you can cut, put a plus and go to the next line. You can cut here, plus and go to the next line. Notice that line four, spans from line four all the way to line seven, but as a programmer, you can read this more easily. This is a good way to read a message, identify where it can be a potential problem and where you can actually parse it effectively if you want to. So all the work you're doing from line four all the way to line seven, you just need to be careful how you break that string. Notice that I broke it by closing the the double quote and adding, just put it at the plus sign. So now if I save, I'm gonna clear my screen, compile and run this program. Notice that it's the same output. It's exactly the same output, nothing changed. Everything remains the same, but it's very easy for us just to read this way. Otherwise they just call, have a very long line. I don't need this part any longer, so I can just remove it. So this will demonstrate how to use the actual arguments along with the wrappers in order to transform a string into a numeric value. Particularly, we use the integer dot parse end in order to transform a string obtaining from a command line argument into an integer. We use concatenation only to demonstrate how to put things together. This is often called midlips, right? If you like to just fill out those blanks, you can also use this kind of program for that. You probably have seen this in the office, of course, but also you can have seen this in other contexts, like for example, when you call your bank or when you call your cell phone provider and someone says, hi, welcome, good morning, Christian Servin. Your current balance is $29.34 and they're currently due February 7, 2021. Would you like to make a payment? And then you can actually interact with this automatic system. Yes, no, uh-huh, press one for yes, press no for, press two for no, and so on. So this is what you're starting to create right now as an automatic system, the user interactions between the computer user and your program. So we can extract that information. The last part, this is optional, and I like to always cover this item because it's kind of fun, and many students, they like to see how to create a very simple GUI, graphical user interface. And Java provides you uh, different forms of creating Java user interfaces with graphical user interfaces. If you're interested in that, I can point you out to a different, through a different video about how can we use these items to create very nice graphical user interface when you have buttons, Dropbox, file choosers, and whatnot. So here I can show you what we call J option pane through a user interaction example 03. This is just to demonstrate that there exists graphical user interface where you can incorporate. Why am I doing this as an optional? Is because Unfortunately, different Java virtual machines nowadays, they have different capabilities and some of the data don't support this particular library. It's not that it's not useful, it's because you have to deal with some other items later on. Let's go ahead and write this small demo. So for this program, I'm going to copy and paste what we did for user interaction example 01, because it's going to look very similar for that interaction. I'm gonna create a new file, dump it, and I'm gonna change here just the name of the file. This will be 03. Let me just save this in my desktop. And instead of using java.util.scanner, I'm gonna use a different library. This is called Java pane. Another friend that we need, yeah, it's called jOptionPane. That is our friend in order to create user interactions. We don't need the scanner anymore. So instead of using system up print line, we're going to use something like J option pane that show input dialog. And then I'm going to put that string here. Now, everything in J option pane is a string. We will have to store that value that we're expecting the string name just before 
the J option pane. So the only thing I'm migrating that line string name comes from the fact of using J option pane that show input dialog. I know it sounds like very long, right? You don't really have to memorize this. This is only a different demonstration I want to explain in this session. So this is the way we extract information, show input dialog. The way we show is instead of system up print line, we're going to use something similar by using J option pane that show message dialog. The very first thing is that you have to put a null, but null is a value for, is the default value for objects. You don't really need to know this piece of information at this point of your education. You're going to use it a lot later on. But right now, just believe me, you need to put that N-U-L-L -L there before that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do the next question. Right now, we're asking, what is your name? Very similar question is, what is the food that you like? So we're going to do something similar, J option pain, and then we're going to use this whole thing that we got it before. What is your favorite food? We're going to extract that from the computer user and we're going to store it a variable called food. We're going to display this enthusiastic comment about OMG. I love that. And then we're going to ask the question about how old are you? And here's when we need to pay attention in the data type. Remember that the J option pane show input dialog. We're always going to give you a string. So we need to handle that situation like string H input, different name, yeah? And then ask that question, how old are you? Now, H input is a string, ladies and gentlemen, and we need to transform it into an integer because otherwise we cannot perform an arithmetic operation between a string and an int. So here, when instead of using input next int, we can use our helper, a wrapper call parse int, and we'll provide the value of h input. That way we can transform the string that we obtain from line eight into a number on line nine so we can subtract in line 10 that h. After that, we're gonna report with the j option pane. We're gonna do something similar what we did in the very first example. I bet you were born in this year. And finally, we can ask the user from another string. This will be the major. That will come from the fact of asking show input dialog. So what is your major will be a dialog now. We need a variable. You don't need to flush anything with J option pane because we're not dealing with different types. Everything is a string. So we don't have to flush it at all. So the only thing we have to just put here is J option pane that show message dialog the comma with the null, and that'll do. So I want you to pay attention here. We extract information, show input dialogs, yeah? We anticipate a variable in the left-hand side. Every time we want to report or mention, you don't need that return type in the left-hand side, but you need to put this J option pane that show message dialog, null, comma, and then that part. So if you want to communicate or report back, you use J option pay show message dialog. If you want to extract information, you use show input dialog. If you want to make an arithmetic operations and therefore transform data types, you need to use your friends like integer.parseInt, double.parseDouble, and whatnot. Let's go ahead, save, and compile, and run this program so you can see how this works. Let's run this program. So here now you can see a dialog, a graphical user interface. Hi, what is your name? So I'm gonna put here Chris, and when I hit enter, nice to meet you, Chris. Notice that the message dialog, it doesn't give you an input like yes or no or okay, right? It just give you okay. This is the, called the message dialog. This is more to report. So you press okay and then goes to your input dialog. This is where you, you have the opportunity to enter information. And when you have here, for example, tacos, everything will be stored. If you can see in the back of this dialog, I am right now on line uh, six, waiting for, um, waiting to receive information from the user. So right now in tacos, I'm basically in, what is your favorite food? This is line six and in the back, you can see that dialog. 
So the next line, when I hit OK, that information tacos will be stored in the variable food from line six. And then I'm going to use J option pane show message dialog, that's line seven. OMG, I love tacos, which is this part of the concatenation on line seven. I press OK. And then I'm going to line eight. How old are you? So this is line eight. When I put here 31, I will put that information on line eight and it will be stored in a variable called H input. That's a string. Once you store that information there, line nine and line 10 will be performed in the background of that program. So once you hit okay, line nine, line 10 got performed. And on line 11, it says J option pane show message dialog. I bet you were born in 1990. Eh? So that is where you perform that line 11. Finally, line 12 is another user input coming from asking what is your major. When I put here computer science and I hit OK, that value is going to store in string, line 12, and finally report it back on line 13 by using J option pane show message dialog. Oh, wow, computer science sounds very interesting. Tell me more about your happy face. You press OK. This will demonstrate three different ways to interact with the computer user. One is by using the scanner. It's the most widely known way to interact. The second thing is by using the arguments. Very well known uh, form to interact with the computer user, especially in programming. You're going to deal with that a lot in the computer science field. And the third one is by using J option paint. J option paint provides you a graphical user interface, which is more user friendly. Depending on the requirements that you need to have, you will create user interface or user interactions appropriately to the application you're writing for. I hope this is useful. And in case you have any questions, please let me know. In the meanwhile, happy coding.